here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm so excited to have you here with me today because I am going to get real with you to tell you how I stay slim after I was going to say 50, but actually it's how I slay bleh, it's how I stay slim after 60. In fact, I'm 63 years old and I have been in your position before. I have sat out there and watched YouTubers and I thought, oh, they're just born that way. They, you know, have this charmed life, whatever. And for those of you who have followed my channel, you know that I really get real with you about my life. Well, it's charmed in some ways for sure, but I definitely have my challenges. And weight loss and maintaining my weight has been a huge challenge throughout my whole life. But in about the past five years, I have really found the key and if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things that help us look and feel our best and feel more comfortable as we get to be more grown up, shall we say, then I hope you subscribe to my channel, click that bell and or share this video with a friend, especially if your friend maybe suffers from weight loss problems or gaining weight and not really knowing what to do. And how this came about is I did a video recently called something like what to do when you've let yourself go, how to get yourself back. Because I had a period where I let myself go and I was eating what I wanted to eat, which was about everything in sight. I was a couch potato. I had stopped exercising. I really didn't care that I was getting kind of fluffy around my waist and that I was gaining weight. It was very, very difficult. And during that video, a lot of women emailed me or left comments and they said, you know, I'm very overweight. I'm so unhappy about it. How do you stay so slim? And I could tell that underlying their question was the idea that obviously, Beth, you know, you were born that way. You're slender, but help poor me. You know, I'm the only person in the world who can't get this right. And I feel bad about myself and I'm really trying, but nothing I am doing is working. And First, I want to say that I am not a naturally slim person. For those of you who have followed my channel, you know that I say there is a 250 pounder in this rather slim looking body. And I am not kidding you when I say that. In fact, let me go back. I'll try to find this picture, but if I can't find it, I'll just tell you about it. But hopefully I can post the picture here. But there's a picture of me when I'm, you know, I'm eight months pregnant, so I'm definitely pregnant. But during that period, I ate exactly what I wanted, which sometimes was five meals a day. And I'm embarrassed to admit it, and this was 35 years ago when I was pregnant, but it was a lot of fast food. I mean, I guess I thought, you know, even if it wasn't great quality food, if I ate enough of it, my baby was going to get what it needed. I mean, and my boys grew up healthy and smart and they're good looking. And so thank goodness everything worked out fine. But left to my own devices, I can gain a lot of weight. And this picture of me shows me topping at about, well, at the end of that pregnancy, I had gained 75 pounds eating as I really want to eat. And I dieted in the last month to try to not surpass 200 pounds. So I'm not kidding when I say this. You guys, I have struggled. It's so funny. There's a YouTuber that I watch, but she does her what I eat in a daze. And she says things like, well, for lunch, I make this potato and she shows this very small looking potato on a plate. And she says, and I put this topping and this topping on it, but it's so much food that about halfway through, most of the time I just say, oh, I don't want any more. And I throw the other half away. And I have never in my life been able to stop in the middle of eating something that was good and just say, you know, I think I'm full. I don't think I want any more of that. Kind of like a lot of people will tell me, well, Beth, just eat one cookie. I am sorry, there is no eating one cookie for me. There is eating five or 10, maybe half the bag, maybe all of the bag. And let me start out by saying this. Those of you who do not have a biochemical tendency to addiction, don't get this at all. And I have come to believe over the years of studying myself and others that some of us actually have a biochemistry where we're sensitive in some way to sugars and carbs. For instance, I quit drinking 22 years ago and I'm convinced that one of the reasons I had a drinking problem was because alcohol is sugar. And in an addictive person in the presence of alcohol, carbohydrates, which turn into sugar, amazingly enough, you know, white potatoes, rice, cakes, pies, cookies, even if they don't have sugar in them, they turn into sugar in your body very readily. So people that have that sensitivity to sweets and carbs, basically they get what I'm talking about. They understand that 
you almost need to eat before you go to a party because if that party has great food on the table, you might embarrass yourself by how much you eat at that party. And why I really can't have cookies in my house or cakes in my house because I won't just eat one slice of cake or one or two cookies. You know, I will binge out and eat the whole thing. That is just the way I am and I understand that after all these years. So anyway, enough of my history. If you also suffer from the hunger monster, is what I call it, the hunger monster, I have tamed my hunger monster through many years of trial and error. And quite honestly, even if you're 30, 40, 50, or 63 like me, or even older, it's important to look at people who have walked the walk and they have gone through all of the pits and the valleys and the ups and the downs, and they really know what they're talking about. And with regard to being super hungry and having eating problems and weight gain problems, you are looking at somebody who really does have that. But I really feel like I have largely overcome them. Here's a look at me in this outfit right now. And I know it's winter right now. And normally I would be wearing a sweater because it is almost Thanksgiving. But I did want you to see my body for those of you who don't follow my channel. And you know, I'm 63 years old. And my body is not perfect. I mean, naked, uh, you know, you might want to look the other way. But in terms of in my clothes, I am very slender. And it is because I have learned the ways to tame the hunger monster. So in just a few moments, I'm going to get into that and tell you exactly the few things that I have done to really make a huge difference in my life. And believe me, if you do these things I tell you about in this video, you will lose weight and you will feel better, and you will feel better about yourself. And I am not kidding. I have been there, done that, you know, taking the medicine, whatever. This is really what works if you have the kind of eating problem that I have. And before I get into that, I want to tell you that later on in the video, I'm going to tell you about some of the makeup I have on. And this lipstick is phenomenal. It is from BK Beauty, and she was kind enough to send me the whole range of her wonderful new lipsticks and lip liners. And I have them here, and I'll show them to you later in the video. And number one, I have to say, this lipstick is just gorgeous. And I actually have two colors on here, but I will explain that. It almost looks like I've got a lip liner on, which I do, but one of these lipsticks is a little darker, and I kind of layered them. And these are great lipsticks because it's kind of like well, it's kind of like my Jo Malone perfumes, which I was going to tell you about too. I love these perfumes. This is Jo Malone Orange Blossom. And this that I just got from Sephora is Jo Malone Wild Bluebell. And OMG, it is phenomenal. If you want a beautiful floral perfume that will smell on you, just like it does in the bottle, and to be able to mix and match, layer them, this is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, just smelling that makes me happy. But I have found out, and Lisa probably already knows this, but these lipsticks are layerable. And so just having one, oh, it's kind of like eating cookies. Just having one may not be enough, but I will tell you about this a little later in the video. And by the time this video airs, Angie of Hot and Flashy, her brushes will be back in stock. Yay! And here are her brushes. And they look small. <laughs> and this is, you know, they're over like $100, but they're very reasonable in price because all together I think they're $16 a brush. And these little brushes are making a huge difference in my ability to almost feel like a makeup artist. I wasn't a makeup artist or anything like that when I came to YouTube. But after I got Angie's brushes, all of a sudden I had the ability to do beautiful eyeshadow looks out of a multitude of palettes because these brushes really are better. And I haven't really mentioned them because they've been out of stock. Almost since the day that Angie announced them, maybe about a month ago, you can't find them anywhere. But by the time this video airs, these will be available and there's a discount code link below the video. I'll get to that a little later in the video. I am digressing. Okay, how I stay slim. Number one, reduce or eliminate processed carbs and sugars reduce or eliminate processed carbs and sugars. And by processed carbs, I'm talking about cakes, pies, cookies, pancakes, anything that's made with flour, that kind of thing. And also, even though this is not processed, things like white potatoes and things like white rice, all of those types of carbs either greatly reduce or eliminate them entirely. And actually, although it's impossible to totally eliminate that group of foods, if you do that, you will find that your hunger, which may be normally up here, gets reduced to almost nothing. 
And I realized this when I switched from being a vegetarian, which is very high carb. This was about four years ago, five years ago. I was a vegetarian, very high carb, a lot of tortillas, rice, beans, all of that. And I switched to the paleo autoimmune diet, which is very low carb. And I did that because I had arthritis. In fact, I have a little red finger here. This is a remnant, I guess, of the rheumatoid arthritis that I had. But through trying many alternative means, I got rid of about 90% of my arthritis pain. But I read the paleo autoimmune reduces inflammation and that that would maybe take care of the rest of my pain and that is exactly what happened. I started on that paleo autoimmune diet, which is very low carb. You basically have meats, vegetables, and very low glycemic fruits like blueberries, but you knock out all the cakes, pies, cookies, white rice, beans, all of that kind of carby type stuff. And amazingly enough, not only in one week's time did I have no more inflammation and no more pain, the hunger that I had experienced pretty much my entire life was gone. All of a sudden, I could see a plate of cookies and just think, oh, I'm not hungry, I don't want that. I understood how the other half lives, the other half that does not have an addiction to carbs, sweets, that kind of thing. And it was absolutely wonderful. It was freedom. It was freedom from the hunger monster for the first time in my life. And please comment below if you get what I'm saying. I hope I'm not the only one. I don't think I am. Because I think looking at American women, half of us are heavy. Not even just women, women and men, half of us are heavy. And I think some of it is the food industry. They have deliberately addicted us to a lot of sweets and, and carby type things. And those are the things that are worse for us. And those are the things that make us crave eating. So anyway, cut down on the processed carbs and sweets. That's number one. Number two, and this is really almost just as important, is intermittent fasting. Once I added intermittent fasting to my diet, I almost didn't ever have to diet again. Even if you don't want to get rid of the carbs, my first recommendation really is to go ahead and stop eating breakfast. Everybody said all the time when we were growing up, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Make yourself snarf it down. I never was hungry for it when I was in like junior high and high school. And mother like literally made me eat eggs, I remember, until one day I threw up at the table and that made her stop you know, trying to get me to snarf down those eggs. But anyway, intermittent fasting is very, very simple. And the scientific research, the scientific studies have found that through intermittent fasting, you get almost the same benefits as you do through a total fast. And I am not a scientist, but I want you to know the scientific research behind intermittent fasting. So I'll put a link below the video to healthline.com. And it is a lot of the research studies on the benefits of intermittent fasting. And what it is in a nutshell is you have a 16 hour window where you don't eat, usually from about seven o'clock one night till about 11.30 or 12 the next day. So 16 hours of not eating. I don't know if that's exactly the right math. You know, I'll hear about it from you guys if it isn't. But then you eat your lunch, maybe around noon, and then you eat your dinner and be done by about seven or 7.30, and then you don't eat again for 16 hours. And the first day or two you do it, you're going to be hungry in the morning. There is no doubt about it. And the way to slip into this, and it's the way I slipped into it, is the first morning, I just let myself wait till 10 o'clock before I ate. The next morning, maybe 10.30, then 11. And little by little, I got myself not eating from about seven at night to noon the next day. And I am firmly convinced that once I started intermittent fasting, I started to look better. And according to the research studies, I am not wrong about that because basically the studies show it helps you lose weight because number one, you're eating fewer meals a day, you're eating two meals a day, and so you're taking in less calories. And actually short-term fasting actually increases your metabolism and it helps you burn even more calories. And all of this is documented when you go to that link. Basically it says, according to a 2014 review of the scientific literature, like all of the literature on intermittent fasting, Intermittent fasting can cause weight loss of three to 8% over three to 24 weeks. That's a huge amount, almost 10% of your body weight lost, not through cutting calories, just through cutting out breakfast. And I will say that you can have coffee or tea or no calorie beverages between seven at night to noon the next day, but don't put cream in your coffee because that does break your fast, get used to that. And I used to be a cream and coffee kind of a girl, plus, plus sweet and low, I have to admit. And I got rid of that. It was hard at first. And now I can't stand cream in my coffee. I like my black coffee. In fact, I have it right here. And this is my I am fabulous mug. I am fabulous. Some days you'll see I have a cup that says I'm enough. 
And then I had that cup one day in a video and one girl said, she said, why don't you say you're fabulous? Why do you just say I'm enough? Say you're fabulous. And I thought, you know, that would make me feel happy. So I decided to get an I am fabulous mug. I'll try to find it and link it below. But anyway, okay, I diverged again. Okay, another thing intermittent fasting does, it helps your heart. It reduces your risk of diabetes because it totally levels out your blood sugar. And it reduces your risk of Alzheimer's, of getting it in the first place. And if you already have it, it says that short-term fasts were able to significantly improve Alzheimer's symptoms in nine out of 10 people. So if you can remember, try to do intermittent fasting if you're having some Alzheimer's type problems. And one of the greatest things about intermittent fasting to me is that it reduces the inflammation all over your body. And so that helps if you have joint pains, things like that, but also it makes you prettier. I mean, it really does. Before I was doing intermittent fasting, I was always a little bit puffy and I just felt, you know, I could feel the fluid in my fingers and I just felt kind of inflamed. Well, they say that intermittent fasting actually helps your skin look better because it reduces that inflammation. Also, intermittent fasting is known to help your cells clean out the garbage out of the cells of your whole body. It basically gives your body time, that 16 hour fasting window in which to throw out the garbage. And we all get cell debris that goes all over our body and just stays there, I guess. But I really do like it that fasting gives your body a chance to clean house. And you know, one of the greatest benefits of intermittent fasting is that you will live longer. It says one of the most exciting applications of intermittent fasting may be its ability to extend lifespan. In some of these studies, the effects were quite dramatic. In an older study, rats that were fasted every other day lived 83% longer than rats who weren't fasting. And again, intermittent fasting gives you the benefits of fasting without being so hungry and for so long. Okay, my first tip was reduce or eliminate sugars and processed carbs. Second tip was don't eat breakfast. Third tip is eat only at meals. And this is a hard one for me. And once in a while, I get into a bad habit of having a snack when I come home at four o'clock. And sometimes when you have those snacks, it can be that you almost eat enough calories in your little snack to basically give yourself a double dinner. So I really try to not eat between meals. That keeps you from grazing all day. And that whole idea from the low fat times, I guess, that we should eat multiple little snacky meals a day has not been proven to be the case because that basically just keeps your blood sugar going up and down and up and down all day. And you really do need to have a meal blood sugar spike, and then not eat for quite a while because basically what you're doing between those meals, like between lunch and dinner, if you don't eat, is you are fasting for those two or three or four hours, however long it is until your next meal. Okay, another tip I have for you, which has really helped me, is to get on that scale every morning, to weigh every day. And I make myself do that. There was a period in my life where I did not do this and I would get on the scale like when my jeans started to get a little tight and then I would be horrified to realize that I'd gained eight pounds or something like that. And it is a lot more difficult to lose those eight pounds if you haven't been on the scale in a month than it is to get on the scale every day. And what I do is I have a weight window that I like to be in. I like to be between 118 and 121. I really like to be around 119, but just kind of in that 118 to 121, I am five feet, almost six inches tall. And so, Weighing every day gives me the ability when I get on that scale to say, oh, I'm a pound or two up. I think I'll just watch it today. And then lo and behold, the very next morning, I'm back in my weight window again. So weigh every day. And another thing to do is to move your body every day. Long ago, I was in this kid's show called One of a Kind. I was the rainbow lady. And we had a character on there, Mary Myba. Move your body around is what Myba stood for. And we taught the children that watched our show body movement and that's what we all need to do is move your body around. And I have a trick on that is to say, like say, say you want to start a walking program or you want to get on the treadmill, make yourself a pact that each day, Monday through Friday, I give myself and you weekends off, but each day promise yourself you'll get on the treadmill one minute or you'll go outside and walk one minute because once you, you know, get yourself together and you get on that treadmill or you get on your shoes and you start walking, you walk your minute and you think, oh, that felt pretty good. I'm going to walk three minutes and then I'm going to walk five minutes and, you know, 10 minutes isn't bad. And before you know it, you're 20 minutes from home 
and you've had a 35, 40 minute walk. Don't start out saying, I'm gonna get on the treadmill for an hour every single day, or I'm gonna take a five mile walk every single day. Start with one minute. That is something called a mini habit. And I've read several books on this and I've done a video in the past about the power of mini habits, but that is how I motivate myself. Like for instance, when I wanted to start doing push-ups, I said, I will do one push-up a day and I could easily do 10 and before you know it, now I do 25. So that is the power of mini habits. So anyway, that is how I have managed to stay slim for all of these years. And now that I've learned these keys, it really is pretty easy. I don't have to think about it much. And as long as I stay low carb, I don't really even have to count calories. I can eat that second chicken breast if I want, or I can have a little more steak. Now I will tell you in terms of low carb, I am more paleo now than keto. I was keto for a while, but unfortunately, as we get to be more grown up, sometimes our digestion has problems and that's exactly what happened for me. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know I've spoken in the past about how I have IBS and basically I have to go to the potty a lot. Well, we'll put it that way, not get real graphic about it. But I went on the keto and I was still having problems with IBS and then I learned a way of eating for IBS that was not so high fat. And basically when I went to chicken and fish, instead of eating bacon and pork and all of that kind of high fat stuff I was eating, it really cured about 95% of my IBS symptoms. And if you're interested in seeing a video about how I have largely conquered my IBS, or at least gotten 95% of the way there, please ask in the comment section below the video because I would love to share that with you. Okay. Now, I am so excited to share these BK Beauty products with you. And I will say that Lisa J sent me these brushes and they are incredible. And I will try to find a picture to show you all the brushes I have. And in the past, I had this belief that maybe I would be better with makeup if I just bought expensive brushes. And at one point for Christmas, I had my husband spend, I think it was $370, 70 plus dollars on a whole set of Sigma brushes. It was in a case and it kind of rolled out and it was about this much brushes. I mean, probably 25 brushes. And lo and behold, <laughs> I was so excited to get those brushes, but I still had my challenges with makeup. It definitely really did not help me at all. And so I bought all these brushes over the last three or four years on YouTube. And I kind of started thinking that maybe brushes don't have all that much to do with it. I knew they helped somewhat but I didn't think they could take you from being not very good with makeup to being wonderful with makeup. But BK Beauty brushes have proven me wrong on that. Here's a picture of Lisa J from her channel and it is wonderful and you need to go visit her channel in addition to, quite honestly, you need to buy her brushes. But this is, I think, two sets of her brushes and this is almost everything you would ever need to do your eyes and your face and I used to have an assortment of brushes because I had the best ones pulled from each brand but ever since these came in the mail, pretty much from the first time I used them, these are the only brushes I use. They are absolutely wonderful quality. You should feel them against your skin. And I've had these for like two months now and they have gone through lots of washings and they come out absolutely beautiful. In fact, I washed most of them again last night. And not only do they wash up well and they never shed, I've never had any of them shed, they're super soft, but more than that, they help take you from a person who's average with makeup to somebody who's pretty darn good. And I will say that I noticed the difference in that right away. And one of my favorite brushes is this foundation brush. It's the 101. As those of you who have followed my channel know, I've gone through several different versions of my favorite foundation brush. And I think I finally found the brush. I don't know if you've noticed, but my skin is really looking much more radiant lately, much more radiant. And I really think it is this brush because I just basically you know, dabbed the foundation all over my face and I spray a little bit of Urban Decay setting spray on this and then I just buff it all out and there are no streaks. It lasts beautifully like all day long. Absolutely a gorgeous flawless looking foundation look. Fantastic. And the funny thing is when I heard that Angie was going to have her own line of BK Beauty brushes that were mostly focusing on eyes except where is her where is her cheek brush? Oh my gosh, I have it somewhere and it is phenomenal. Well, oh, here it is, okay. These are Angie's brushes and they came out and I was thinking, oh yeah, okay, another fancy successful YouTuber. I mean, I love Angie, 
but another big YouTuber, she's just gonna put her name on some brushes and how can they be any better than these are? Because I was already thinking these were pretty phenomenal. Well, leave it to Angie. And you know Angie, she doesn't just put her name on something. She researches, she studies, she figures it out. And she designed these specifically with us in mind. And by us, I mean old ladies. I mean, let, let's be real. I am 63 years old. I'm no spring chicken anymore. And anything that Kylie Jenner is doing, I probably largely should not be doing. We are in a different kind of a strata now. We are more mature and we are more grown up and we really do need our own brushes. And the amazing thing about these brushes is they are totally formulated for our aging eyes. Now, at the Sephora sale, I picked up a myriad of eyeshadow palettes. I mean, a, a lot. I'm almost embarrassed. If you'd like to see what I bought at Sephora, uh, let me know because I will do a video about that because I bought a lot of eyeshadow palettes and I've been having so much fun with them because with these brushes, every eyeshadow palette I get, I can create myself a beautiful eyeshadow look. And briefly, let me tell you about the Angie brushes that I like the best. This is a phenomenal blush brush. Here it is. Gorgeous. Absolutely love it. And the funny thing is, when I saw this at first, I was disappointed because I always thought I liked these round, fluffy brushes that weren't kind of shaped like a triangle as this was. But I saw Angie demonstrate this, and then I started using it on my blush, and now I would never go back to the other. Basically, I used a cream blush here. I put it here. This works for cream or powder. But I put it here and then go like this, and then take the side of the brush and buff it out. Buff it out and it absolutely gives you a beautiful accentuation to your cheekbone, and it also just makes it look very natural. You can keep blending, it's beautiful. Now, my second favorite brush is just this little flat brush, and this is a great way to pack on the shadow. It's just a nice little flat brush, and her crease brushes are crazy amazing. This is the main crease brush that Angie has in her set, and it is better than the brushes out there and all of the hundreds of brushes that I have, in that it is small enough to really define that crease because I have one hooded eye. I think it's this one. And it's just very helpful to get in there and uh, do some fine detail work there instead of sloshing that color everywhere. You, you have the ability to almost feel like a makeup artist because you're, you have the ability to put the color exactly where you want it. And then for the outer corner, I never did get how to do this very well until I had these brushes. And basically this is a little, little tiny crease brush and you can do the detail work of making your little kind of diagonal mark here, your, your little seven here, just to emphasize that outer corner there. That's absolutely the perfect small size brush to get in there and do that work without getting the eyeshadow everywhere. And then I'm trying to think, and this is a great blending brush, and that is a super important thing is to blend your eyeshadow out. And I wasn't doing that enough before I got these brushes. And let's see what else. This little brush is a wonder worker. And this looks like any other little brush, right? This brush is phenomenal and it's dirty. Sorry about that. This is what Angie and I use to put on concealer and it is amazing. You put your concealer on under your eye and your nose area and then you just wipe it with this brush. And this is the softest brush. And it absolutely, there's something about it and I don't know how Angie designed it this way, but it absolutely takes that concealer and takes the cakiness away. It blends it into your skin. It feels wonderful to do this. I look forward to using this brush. And in my future makeup videos, I know I will be using this brush set because it really does help me do a much more beautiful makeup. So you will see this in action, but it is amazing. And then this little brush, I didn't really think I would use much, but I am using it. What I do is, having gotten older, I try to mostly do a matte eyeshadow but I still like a little bit of glimmer, so a little bit of shimmer. And so I'll take this and dip it into some Urban Decay setting spray or some water and then dip it in the shimmery shadow and then just do one splash of it here, one splash. It's almost like you've taken your finger, but my fingers are too big to really do that. This brush gives you the ability to get just the perfect amount of shimmer on your lids without getting it everywhere, without it splashing down on your cheeks. This is a fabulous brush. I really can't believe how great these brushes are. They were out of stock almost from the first day Angie announced that they were on the market. But by the time this video airs, they will be back in stock. And if Lisa J is as smart as I think she is, she ordered hundreds of these, maybe thousands and thousands of these because they would make a great Christmas present. Plus, and I will tell you this, but I can't tell you, I don't think I'm supposed to tell you what the product is because I know they're gonna do an unveiling. 
but she has yet another product, which is a phenomenal product. I saw pictures of it and I think she's sending it to me. And Lisa, by the way, you are the most gracious, kind person ever. And Lisa has been unbelievably gracious. She is sweet, she is kind, she gives me her brushes, she's sent me her makeup, she's amazing. But anyway, okay, she also sent me, which I will show you, and I've spent so much time on this, I probably need to hurry, but she sent me her new lipsticks and her new lip pencils. And they are phenomenal, all of them. And I'll show you, I'll show you what I have on. Okay, I think this is what I have on, and sorry, I have to have my, my peepers on because I can't see very well. This one is called Inner Beauty. This one is called Acceptance. And I'll put those, actually I'll show you them swatched, but I'll put them on again. And I think they're just beautiful. And they are super, 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 super creamy. And they last a long, long time. And then look at this. I better pull this down here. Look at the lids. And I don't know if you can hear this, but listen to this. Hear that? Super high end and just super classy. Love that. And then what I did is I put a little bit of this one over it called Acceptance. And I love the names, by the way. And there we go. It's a little bit lighter. And so it gives me the look like I have lip liner on. And actually I do. I have one of her lip liners. But I like the idea of combining these lipsticks. And then these other three colors. I'll go ahead and swatch these. The first one is Inner Beauty. Look how pigmented that is. That's a beautiful little rosy nude, and that's my favorite kind of nude. I don't like the super light ones on me very much because I think you should have a nude that is roughly the color of your lips, but better, as they say. This one is Acceptance. Look at that, beautiful. These are such wearable, natural looking colors. There's nothing jarring about them. This one is Passion, Passion. I like this one too. Actually, I like all of these. There they are. How pretty is that? It is kind of a more brick color. It has a little bit more red in it, I would say. These are in no particular order, by the way. The next one is kindness. And that is what Lisa J is all about, is kindness. I mean, I'm not kidding. The woman is kind. And she deserves every bit of success that she's having. And I'm so happy for her. She and Angie, actually. Okay, and the, the last one is self-love. That's a good name, self-love. And this is a little lighter one. It's probably the lightest one. There we go. So those are all of those colors, and I will link her website there so you can really take a better look at them on her website. And then she has the lip liners, and I love her lip liners because they have this, ooh, that's a dark one. They have this kind of um, wide tip, which I really appreciate, I'll just go ahead and put them down here. See, that's a very dark color. And if you're going to be a little dramatic at Christmas, that could be a really good one for you. That's probably a little too dark for me, being a blonde. That one was called Alter Ego, and then this is Warm Spice. And there is that. And see, I'll just swatch that for you there. Warm Spice. And then the next one is Pink Lady. I think this one is super pretty. It's got a little bit of a little bit of a red kind of fuchsia in it. A little soft, soft red. And then the last one that I have is called Sweet Pea. And there is Sweet Pea. And I'll just swatch that one down here. And I love this one. This is the most natural one to me. And that's really close to my lip color. And even if your lipstick doesn't match this, they always say to match your lip liner to your lips. And I think that's a really natural one. If you only get one, I think Sweet Pea is probably the most usable of them all. But look at those colors, and I love them. There's not, a, there's not a bad one in the bunch, and I am so enjoying having these, and you know I'm carrying them around in my purse, and so that's how you know that I truly do love them. Okay, that was my look at how I have managed to stay slim at 63 years old, and I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below the video. Believe me, if you are struggling, I feel your pain because I was there for many, many years. And it's just through following the things that I've shared with you in this video. And they are not marketing hype. They are the actual things that have helped me conquer my hunger monster and become slim naturally and to lose that voracious hunger I had. Thank you for watching my video and I'll see you next time. Thank you.